Before the video begins, I'd like to give everyone a warning. The experiences told in this video are extremely disturbing and violent. Viewer discretion is advised. I'd also like to state that like previously mentioned in the video before this, these aren't going to be told in regular storytelling format, more like a friend telling a friend. There are some long experiences and some shorter ones. Either way, I hope you can enjoy the video. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin. We responded to an apartment building when the caretaker had called us. His initial report was that he went to go check on a room because water had been reported flooding into the hallway. He informed us that there was a deceased lady in the tub. He said he had saw her and immediately backed out without touching anything. We entered the room and it was filled with steam. The humidity had started peeling the paint off the walls in sheets. There was also the smell of cooked meat. Upon entering the bathroom, we found the supposed deceased seated in the tub with the hot water running. From the looks of it, she had been there a while. The skin on her body all the way from toes to sternum had started separating. Much like the paint on the walls, it was bubbled and coming up in sheets. I checked for vitals while someone turned off the water and the others went to go get a bag and radio for a can. I almost shit my pants when I found signs of life. The lady had a pulse. She wasn't really responsive, but she was breathing shallow, had a heartbeat, and was looking at us. We had to get her out. We radioed for EMS and informed them that we had a live patient with at least 80% burns. They were a few minutes out, so we started to get the patient ready for transport. I don't remember what we were doing when we noticed the water draining from the tub, but what we saw was her torso essentially degloving itself as the water receded. We immediately plugged the bathtub and continued working on her. When EMS arrived, we had to transfer her to the stretcher. That's where things got ugly. We planned on gently lifting her out of the tub and placing her on the stretcher, However, as soon as we touched her, her skin was coming off in sheets. I remember saying, Sorry ma'am, but we have to do this. As I picked up my section and came away with almost all of the skin I contacted stuck to my arms. That was the only time she made a sound. She probably couldn't feel it due to the nerve damage, but I'm pretty sure she knew she had lost almost all of her skin from the chest down. The water was extremely hot, so we were also getting burned while doing this. We managed to get her onto the stretcher and EMS took her away. When the bathtub was drained, there was a sheet of skin stuck to the bottom. We had to scrape it off and bag it. I still can't eat certain chicken dishes because of this. We figured she was in the tub and the water got cool, so she turned it on with her toe. She must have had a stroke and could not turn it off again. Being an apartment, it had pretty much unlimited hot water. So that poor lady sat there for approximately three days cooking. She didn't survive. We don't get a lot of follow-up on calls, but I heard she passed away. Between a stroke and severe burns, it wasn't likely she'd make it. But we treat every patient like they have a chance. The human body is a weird and wonderful thing. Sometimes people do make it through some pretty terrible things. I had one call where a nice enough lady was going from psych ward to psych ward at hospitals about two miles apart. She was nice enough in what broken Spanish I could use to talk with her. She kept holding her stomach and saying muerta and mucho dolor, which is death or some conjugation of, and much pain. Which wasn't too creepy until I started reading her paperwork. The gist of it was that she was having hallucinations of essentially a grim reaper following her and disemboweling her. She had also had some surgery for an abdominal injury that was literally documented as 
a mild evisceration that did not appear to be self-inflicted and she was adamant that this reaper figure did it to her. This is the most gore I have seen from a call and it made me think a little about the irony of it. I responded to a call where a janitor was dusting or cleaning a quite large stone cross in the middle of a church. He had been up on a ladder cleaning when he slipped off the ladder and proceeded to try to hang on to the cross to keep him from falling. Unfortunately, the weight of the around 200 pound man was too much to support. The cross fell towards him, landing on his left arm, with a part of the horizontal stone of the cross, pushing his muscles and tendons out of his wrist like a squeezed toothpaste tube. Then the cross fell completely on him, splattering his brain across the floor. Quite disturbing, and definitely the most horrific and gore-filled call I had ever witnessed. On a Halloween about four years ago, I was working a shift with a good buddy of mine and we got a run for an unknown medical. We were a couple of cocky mid-twenty-somethings. On the way up the elevator, we got caught up in an argument over A's versus Giants Bay Area Baseball. We almost blew off the security guard when he was opening the door to some random apartment. Oh, she's definitely dead the guard said and we were instantly like um what usually the cops get to this sort of thing before us plus we had no idea a dead body was involved yet there she was reclined in a lazy boy with her feet up all the way in a position of comfort her eyes were rolled back and mouth agape just like in the movies over her head was a translucent plastic bag taped neatly around her neck. I don't know if it was the combination of reclined death and a lazy boy, a nonchalant plastic bag, a possible murder, or the fact that it was Halloween, but that was a creepy scene. I think we actually had a shooting and a stabbing on that shift as well. In general, the creepiest calls for me are hangings. Something about a body just hanging listlessly in the dark. The last one I had we were dispatched to without lights and sirens, which itself was weird. We ended up at a Safeway with a bunch of cops who had no idea where the hanging was. Apparently, the guy who called it in was casually shopping in the produce section. This guy mentions to us that the body was at a construction site across the street. Needless to say, we told the guy to show us where now. Sure enough, there was a well-executed hanging about five feet off the ground. There was rope rigged over a facade and tied to cement blocks on the other side of a chain-link fence. Seeing a dead body hanging in the dead of night is one of those things that stays with you. You keep it in your back pocket so you can tell the story later when someone asks about the job. Police officer here. If a paramedic ever goes on a creepy call, we usually show up too. Worst I ever saw was a suicide via slit wrists. This woman was clearly struggling mentally. She went into her basement and started sawing at her wrists horizontally with a rusty hacksaw. She bleeds a good amount and then she starts walking around the house. She wasn't dying quick enough, so she sat down in a chair in the middle of the living room and started going at her wrists again, this time with a pair of scissors. I was the second person inside the house. It looked like a massacre. We searched the house, top to bottom, fully expecting to find multiple dead bodies in there. I've never seen so much blood in my life. Every single room had a trail of blood in it. The woman was found on a chair in the living room. 
rigor mortis had contorted her body in a really strange, unnatural pose, and her face was haunting. Literally the stuff of nightmares. Her wrists had huge chunks of skin, veins, muscle, missing from them. Saying she slit her wrists is inaccurate. She ripped them to pieces. I had a call at around 9 just after I came on duty of an elderly male with a possibly high fever. Not a whole lot of info as the caller was his elderly wife who, according to the dispatcher, was, quote, hard to understand. Anyway, we head out and get there 7 minutes or so later. As we go in, the wife is sitting at the kitchen table just inside the door so we ask her what's going on. She answers that he, quote, has been complaining he is too hot all morning. We go into the next room, which is dark due to the curtains covering the windows, but there is enough light to see a dead man sitting in a chair. Now, mind you, he was not recently dead. I'm talking blackened face, rot, maybe rat bites around the mouth, wasn't complaining this morning type of dead. I set down my equipment and my partner goes to turn on the light next to his chair so we can verify the obvious. As she goes to reach for the light, the dead man groans and reaches for her hand. After collectively shitting our pants, we jump into action. Come to find out, he was on oxygen and a smoker. He was complaining about being hot because he was literally burning up. What looked like signs of death on his face was scorch marks and melted plastic. And to answer the obvious question, I don't know. He was still alive when we got him to the hospital and I never asked what happened to him after that. I have been on some creepy and depressing calls. One particular call that I remember was getting dispatched to a 96-year-old female with rectal bleeding. It was almost 6 a.m. and when we entered the residence, the woman was yelling, he raped me, over and over again. Finally, the story came out that she had gone outside to get her paper, and some guy had emerged and followed her inside, raped her anally, stole all her medications, and then fled. I can't give away too many details, but... I certainly believed what she was saying. We were trying to convince her to go to the ER and she was adamant that she would not go. We kept pressing her and then she said, My son's funeral is in four hours, I can't miss it. That moment really hit me hard. I never followed up with it. I've had a ton of cases that some would consider creepy, like ones with schizophrenic patients laughing and talking to people who aren't there, watching someone experience full-blown visual and auditory hallucinations can be pretty creepy. We did have one call where we picked up a patient who claimed they were being tracked by the US government. Of course, nursing staff and everyone involved assumed that it was just some kind of delusion run-of-the-mill psych patient case. He spent time talking about documents that he previously had access to, and how the government didn't want him to release the information to anyone. He yelled and screamed as we put him on the cot about being sane and that we were being brainwashed. As we loaded our patient into the rig, he says we'll be followed to the next facility. Jokingly, my partner asks what was going to follow us, which he replied with, a black Lincoln town car. As we leave, almost immediately there was a black town car behind us, which stayed behind us for roughly 15 minutes transport, and only disappeared as we got within a few blocks of the new facility. We dropped the patient off and all he had was a smug I told you so look on his face. Hey. 
Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit different, and not all videos are going to be like that, I just thought it was a topic that hasn't been covered much and it deserved to be. Plus, I asked you guys in the last video if you wanted to see it and all of you said yes. Also, sorry if I sounded a bit off in this video, I think I'm getting a little bit sick. If you would like to see more videos like this, please like the video and comment saying so. I do actually pay attention to the like bar now and I read all your comments. It's one thing to get views, but it's another thing to know if your viewers are actually enjoying your content. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and have a nice day.